Hey everyone, here's your next with Val Ridge. Today we're going to talk about the rabid left and just their tendency towards violence and horrifying rhetoric. If you're like me, you've been paying attention the last few months and probably the last few years. So what is the rabid left? Who are these leftists? Well, let's define terms unlike they do. Let's define our terms. I consider the left uh, socialist. I don't care if it's democratic socialist. I don't care if it's uh, Marxist socialist. Whatever hyphenated socialist that you want to put in there. Uh, not including liberals. Uh, liberals you can at least have a dialogue with, you can at least converse with, you can have a conversation. And the old adage that they go by, liberals do, is that I may disagree with what you're saying, but I'll fight to the death to defend it. So I'm not including those people in uh, the so-called left. If you've been paying attention the last few months especially, uh, you'll notice that the left has ramped up their rhetoric quite a bit, whether it's uh, marches across the country or whether it's burning down college buildings or preventing people from speaking, uh, their actions are becoming increasingly wound up and they've quietly uh, and they've quite honestly become emboldened as to what they are doing. Ever since they started coming into this country and they really started pouring in in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the socialist left has had a way of profaning every set of values that we have as Americans, profaning our traditions, and profaning our system of government. Uh, they've been very brilliant, actually, at hijacking language. Uh, for example, uh, we're, you know, people that would be considered pro-constitution, pro-liberty, uh, they would be so-called conservatives. But that term wasn't coined until FDR was president. He's a classic progressive, a classic uh, quasi-socialist, if you will. Uh, he called people that, that upheld the Constitution, he called their conservatives, as if that was a derogatory term. And what the left has done is hijacked the term liberal. Uh, classic liberalism in the Enlightenment, the so-called uh, you know, so Enlightenment, our forefathers such as Thomas Jefferson and the founding fathers of this country were classic liberals mostly. Uh, they believed in limited government, individual freedoms, and freedom from government. And that's why they set up the form of government that they did, to have a limited government for the purpose of protecting individual liberty. So the left has been very brilliant at profaning not only the terminology, but our traditions as well. The left is very good at using the Constitution to protect their acts. And they're also very good at minimizing it when it comes to their benefit. For example, if they have a candidate in office... Uh, they will say that the Constitution is, is broad and expansive and a living, breathing document, and it's all this fun stuff. So they love doing that when, when their individual is in office. But when it's somebody else, then all of a sudden they take a strict interpretationalist approach to the Constitution. It's almost like a pre arguing with a preschooler, uh, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. I want you guys and gals to understand something, that the goal of socialism has and always will be using our system of government to destroy it. Um, if you look at how some of these, these organizations have been founded, uh, they are founded within the rule of law for the purpose of using the law to subvert this nation and bring about their wanted utopia. Uh, it's a very profane thing, and that's how you can know what evil is, is mixing holy and profane or mixing truth with lies. Uh, they're very good at doing that. Uh, for example, uh, an organization, the ACLU, I'll just throw that out. And if you guys are liberals and you're a part of the ACLU, you need to do your homework on why that organization was started. It's most certainly not because of the American civil liberties at all. Um, it was started by a devout socialist. It was started by a guy whose entire plan uh, was to subvert the Constitution of the United States by using the Bill of Rights and the Constitution to do exactly that. Lately, the socialists have been increasingly violent, not only in their rhetoric, uh, but in their actions as well. All you need to do is follow any college campus. And, and I, I do want to premise this with this entire statement here. The majority of these actions and this ideology is confined to major metropolitan areas and college towns. This is the cesspool breeding ground of socialism um, because when you deal in theory and academia your entire life, you have the luxury of putting on utopian ideals without ever having to prove them. Uh, so when you look at this stuff, and I'll, I'll use a quote from Thomas Sowell, one of the greatest economists of our day. Uh, he's getting up there in age, but still a pretty smart guy. Uh, he says that socialism has a record of failure so abysmal that only an intellectual could believe that it could succeed. That brings us to the next logical step of the evolution of socialism. Socialism was, is, and always will be the most violent ideology on earth. Uh, when you look at how many hundreds of millions of people that it is responsible for killing, excluding war, uh, last century and the 20th century, they killed in excess of 150 million people. 
And yes, you heard me right. Excluding war, that means not including. <laughs> so no World War I, no World War II. Over 150 million people in this world were put to death under the banner of socialism. Yes, that includes the USSR. Yes, that includes Cambodia. Yes, that includes China, Cuba, Latin America, North Korea, on Vietnam. On and on we go, we can find that millions of people in these so-called people's revolutions are put to death by their own government because they don't agree with them. Welcome to the United States of America and this movement in the 21st century, although it goes back well before this, but when we look at this situation now, now they're taking up the banner of the Second Amendment. And, and I find this very ironic because throughout my entire life, over the last three and a half decades, throughout my entire life, I've seen the rabid left rant and rave against the Second Amendment to the Constitution, and people don't need this, you don't need a rifle, you don't need a pistol, you don't even need a 22. welcome to Great Britain. And we see all these people here, and they've ranted and raved against the Second Amendment and the right to keep and bear arms their entire lives. But now, all of a sudden, now they're embracing the Second Amendment and trying to strut their stuff uh, with their little uh, toys. And I like to call them toys because they look like toys to me because they look like they don't know how to set up anything. It's very laughable. And now they're trying to go out there and intimidate people because they're exercising their Second Amendment rights. Hey, I'm all for open carry. Like, you'll never hear me say anything that people shouldn't be allowed to have firearms. I'll never say that. What I will tell you is this, is what you've got are multiple small pockets across this country of armed socialists uh, pre pre preaching rhetoric about destroying the Constitution and the Republic of the United States and doing it while armed. And if that doesn't get your attention, maybe you ought to turn your brain on and actually process information for a little while. A couple of events coming up, 2017, of course, I'm filming this in March of 2017. What's coming up here in May, of course, is their, is their cherished May Day. That may as well be the Socialist Fourth of July. And if you guys aren't familiar with what May Day is, this has traditionally been a leftist celebration. And in fact, the USSR celebrated May Day every May 1st uh, with the big parades and all their little tanks and all their, their leaking, rusting uh, little... APC carriers and all their guys goose-stepping throughout Red, uh, Moscow and Red Square. And what May Day is, is traditionally a leftist labor organization day. Uh, it goes back all the way to the Haymarket Affair in the 1880s in the United States in Chicago. Yeah, there's like, you know, go figure, leftist socialist movements in Chicago, right? Who, who else, does that sound familiar? And in the 1880s, these people uh, had a labor strike. And what they did is they, the socialist Violent revolutionaries set off bombs and shot police officers. Boy, that's a new thing that's happened. That hasn't happened lately, has it? Their tactics will never change. They are the most violent, radical people on the face of the planet, uh, and they'll continue doing what they do until they get their way. But May Day's coming up, so my advice to you isn't going to change ever since I've implemented the channel, ever since I've been doing videos. I'm going to tell you, all you good people out there, people that that if you're watching my channel, you're, you're more than likely supporting the Constitution, more than likely supporting the Second Amendment, more than likely believe in what the Founding Fathers preached and what they implemented, what form of government they've implemented. You're more than likely protecting your family or in the process of protecting your family. In other words, patriotic. You love this country. You love this land. You love the Constitution, Declaration of Independence. You believe that the American Revolution that we fought was just and that there is no other country in the world like the United States, more than likely. Some of you may not be watching this uh, channel and thinking that. Maybe you're doing it to gather information for your little cause. I don't really care because we're always going to outnumber you. We're always going to outnumber you. You are, you, are, you are the fringe, lunatic fringe of society that nobody believes in. And your policies are so popular that they have to be enforced at the strong arm of a government agency. That's how popular your ideas are. So nobody really cares about you. But the thing is, guys, and if you're out there and you patriots out there, my advice isn't going to change to you. Uh, stay armed. Be smart. We want shooters and thinkers. I think those two need to go hand in hand. You've got to be smart. You've got to protect your family. Um, if you're confronted with violence, do the right thing. You may fight back. You may run away. Uh, you may do some other thing as well. But I'm telling you, be smart about there. Their entire goal is to be seen, heard, and agitate. That is their entire goal. They're going to try to draw you into their little world of violence. Uh, but I want you guys to think about something real quick. If I'd have told you 10, 10 or even 20 years ago that there's going to be armed socialists in America talking about the overthrow of the republic, flying their little red banners and doing all that, you'd have probably thought that, oh, I don't think that could happen anytime soon. What's well, happening now? Is it a lot of people? No. Uh, it is not a lot of people, but nonetheless, they're still out there. And I'm a big believer in knocking cancer out in its first stage. 
If you found the information in the video helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Facebook, that link is down below. And if you want to learn how to protect yourself and your family, come on out to Valor Ridge and we'll teach you how to do just that. This is Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge reminding you, the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.